Amen. Good afternoon. As the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and on behalf of the administration, faculty, staff, and students of Vanderbilt University Divinity School, I have the pleasure of welcoming you to our act of worship and celebration as part of the 147th commencement exercises in the history of our university. Our invocation will be delivered by Paul Chung Ha Lim, Associate Professor of the History of Christianity. May God be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, in every age, you have called people to serve you, prophets, leaders, teachers, and healers. By your word, you have trained us. By your spirit, you have formed our lives. We confess our chronic foolishness, our unwillingness to learn, in our fear of serving you. Forgive us. We have been quick to criticize, but slow to love. O oh God, we desire a new beginning and pray for your wisdom in our speech and actions. Grant your peace and may our gifts glorify your holy and gracious name. Amen. We now have a special address from Provost and Vice Chancellor Susan Wente, who served as Vanderbilt's interim chancellor during the previous academic year and who conferred your degrees on May 8th of 2020. Today we celebrate the achievements of Vanderbilt's class of 2020 graduates, each of whom have shown profound commitment to their field of study and its potential to benefit society. Due to the nature of historic circumstances that coincided with their graduation year, these graduates have also accomplished something that uniquely and permanently distinguishes their character. Graduates, you have opened your minds to new ways of thinking. You have challenged assumptions and made personal sacrifices in order to do what is right and you have entered your next career step at a time when the world needs exactly that willingness and all the deep intelligence and undeniable bravery that comes with it like never before. Together and as individuals, you weathered a generation-defining moment. Your profound resilience has led you here today and it's my greatest honor to celebrate this milestone with you. Thanks to your compassion, fortitude, and grit, we've arrived at the greatly anticipated moment, the ceremonial conferral of academic degrees. The charges that I will read to our graduates were penned by the late Alexander Hurd, Vanderbilt's fifth chancellor. These charges are part of Vanderbilt's legacy. They've been passed down through generations and have been imparted to every graduate of this university since Chancellor Hurd's tenure. Graduates, in receiving these charges, you are joined to a lineage that precedes you, that will endure after you, and which flourishes because of you. Dean Emily Towns will present candidates for the degrees of the Divinity School. 
I congratulate you on the educational distinction you have earned and commend to each of you a life of learned ministry and teaching to the spiritual welfare of humanity. Congratulations to you and to all of our Divinity School graduates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trust of Vanderbilt University and by the vote of the faculties, I confer upon each of you the degrees for which you have qualified and extend to you the best wishes of your alma mater, now and for all the days of your lives. Thank you, Provost Wente. Will the graduates representing the class of 2020 please stand? Madam Dean, I have the honor of presenting to you our graduates who earned the degrees Master of Divinity and Master of Theological Studies and who join us today either in person or virtually. Andrew Russell Flanagan. Brian Clifford Freelix. Rebecca Lee Griffin. Caleb Hampton. Abigail Lebrecht. <laughs> Catherine Janelle Hireman Menis, Nathaniel Partee, Indy Janine Pereira, Russell Andrew. Pointer. Too fast. Way too fast. Brent Rowe Hall. Carla Felicia Scaife. Abigail Ann Siegel Hyman. Samantha Sue Smith. Blake Ellis Timms. Keaton Carlisle Joaquin. Molly Donahue Wilkerson. <laughs> Ryan Dean Wilkerson. <laughs> John Young Ahn. Dawson Scott Allen. Taylor Maine Pearl Brooks. Donald Eugene Carter III. Yu Yuhan Paul Chung. Jacqueline Wright Collins. Michael Corder, Jr. Nicholas Donko, Jr. 
Kevin, Kevin John Ekstrom, Sahel Gingerich, Melvin Guest, Jr., Patricia Hannigan, Rachel Paul Hartman, Heather Helton, Elizabeth Lee Welliver Hingen, Randall Philip Hiroshiga, Sareem Ha, Summer Nicole Heisch, Michael Fears Johnston, Tiffany Brooke Jones, Anna Nicole Kelly, Matthew Lewis Kelly, Elizabeth Ashley Land, Lena Irene Landstrom, Michael Dennis LeBun, Jr., Benjamin Logan, Julia McCorvey, Michael Paul McNichol, John William Mullick, Samuel Aubrey Ordung, Jessica Marie Pagan, Diane Crosby Palmer, Brenda Alejandra Perez de la Pena, Stephanie Lee Powers, Adeline Profet, Danero Ra Meng, Hunter Shea Rhodes, Kaylee Ann Rhodes, William Roloffs, Tremaine Sales Dunbar, Justine Elizabeth Smith, Shinji Takaji, Caroline Kimry Talbot, Rachel Turnus, Marvin Wilcox Jr., Travis Deshawn Williams, Christine Camille Wilson, Sydney Lee Young, and Emma Grace Zyrick. The prayer for our graduates will be offered by Brian Freelix. If everyone would please join me in a word of prayer. O oh God of liberty, justice, and love, to the God of all comfort, as graduates of Vanderbilt Divinity School and as new members of the Schola Profiterum, we celebrate this occasion as all the days of our lives have brought us unto this moment. As the first chapter of our vocation begins, we ask to be endowed with the gift of agency as we go forth in what we hope to be the last days of a global pandemic. We ask this day that you help us honor the aspirations of this great institution so that our private ideologies do not distort our public theology. We ask that you be the constant companion as we journey and share the multiple diverse 
gifts of religion, all while keeping our garments unspotted by transgressions. God, help us always remember that our most excellent ministry comes not from the illusions of grandeur, but in walking the path of humility and charity. We are grateful for the milestone of graduating from Vanderbilt Divinity School. And through this achievement, we thank you for creating a promise of endless possibilities. So God, as we look back on this day, equip us to move forward with determination and zeal. May we honor with all gravity the education we most gladly received from this distinguished institution. Now, as we go beyond these walls, let us be brave. Let us be strong. Let us hold justice as a beacon of light to shine forevermore. And as the class of 2020 move onward and upward from this place, we pray in the order of James Walden Johnson's Black National Anthem. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lord of heaven, we ask that as we go the last mile of this race, we pray to hear you say, well done, well done, and well done. Amen. We also wish to recognize the recipients of the academic and service awards that were presented to the graduates of the class of 2020 and ask that you stand if you are in the audience today. The Founders Medalist Awards are given to one student in each of Vanderbilt's 10 schools and colleges. These awards were endowed by Cornelius Vanderbilt in their first year of presentation in 1877 and today, the presentation of the Founders Medals continues that tradition of honoring the student graduating with first honors from each of Vanderbilt's schools. Dean Towns presented the 2020 Founders Medal to Michael Fears Johnston from McDonough, Georgia, as the 101st Founders Medalist in the history of the Divinity School. Michael was graduated with a Master of Divinity degree and a certificate in Latin American studies. Michael also received special honors for his Divinity degree project and was awarded an Imagination Grant to travel to Ecuador where he conducted research on the religious practices of the indigenous Andean Quechua. Congratulations, Michael. The Academic Achievement Award was presented to four students who earned the Master of Theological Studies degree. Randall Philip Hiroshiga, who also reserved, received the Doctorate of Jurisprudence from the law school. Abigail Ann Siegel Hyman, who also earned the Master of Education degree in Community Development and Action from Peabody College. Shinji Takaji, and Elizabeth Lee Welliver Hingen for example, oh wait, that's it. So let's applaud them. <laughs> for exemplifying the mission and vision of the Divinity School, the Humphrey Lee Dean's Award was presented to Julia McCorvey. Join me please in a round of applause for all of those awardees.
For accomplishments in preaching, the Florence Conwell Prize was presented to Rebecca Lee Griffin. For composing the outstanding sermon, the St. James Academy Award was presented to Molly Donahue Wilkerson. The Frederick Beekner Prize for Excellence in Preaching was awarded to Donald Eugene Carter III. The W. Kendrick Grobel Award for Accomplishments in Biblical Studies was presented to E.U. Huyan Paul Chung. For their accomplishments in New Testament studies, the J.D. Owen Prize was shared by Indy Janine Pereira and E.U. Huyan Paul Chung. The Luke Acts Prize for composing the most significant paper on an aspect of Luke Acts was shared by Molly Donahue Wilkerson and Summer Heisch. For scholarly writing, the John Olin Knott Award was shared by Sahel Gingrich, John William Mellick, and Danero Rameng. And the Friedrich Buch Friedrich Buchner Prize for the Outstanding Thesis was presented to Anna Kelly. The William A. Newcomb Prize for Exemplifying the Idea of Minister as Theologian and for Receiving First Honors on the Master of Divinity Degree Project was awarded to Kevin John Ekstrom. For accomplishments in church history, Jessica Marie Pagan was awarded the Elliot F. Shepherd Prize. And the members of the theology faculty awarded Emma Grace Zyrick the Wilbur F. Tillett Prize. Michael Dennis LeBun Jr. received the Nella May Overby Memorial Award for honors in field education. We can go ahead. Michael also received the Disciples Divinity House Scholar Award for academic distinction by a student representing the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. For academic distinction in pastoral theology and the study of religion, psychology, and culture, the Liston O. Mills Award was presented to Diane Crosby Palmer. For their service in ministry in the African American church, the dean selected Russell Pointer Jr. and Travis Deshawn Williams to receive the Robert Lewis Butler Award. For exemplifying the Wesleyan ideals of Christian servant leadership, Richard, Rachel Paul Hartman and Catherine Janelle Hireman Menace received the Bishop Holland Nimmons McTeer Award from the Divinity School's Methodist Student Association. For her contributions to the Graduate Department of Religion, doctoral student Debbie Brubaker received the Betty R. Ford Graduate Student Service Award, while Divinity School graduate Hunter Shea Rhodes and Angela Dillon, Systems Coordinator for the Office of Admissions, Vocation, and Stewardship, were presented the Student Government Association Service Awards.
Certificates were earned by the following graduates in Jewish studies, Yu Huyun Paul Chung and Justine Elizabeth Smith, in religion and the arts in contemporary culture, Sahil Gingerich, Rebecca Lee Griffin, Kaylee Ann Rhodes, and Sydney Lee Young, in the Carpenter Program in Religion, Gender, and Sexuality, Jessica Maria Marie Pagan and Stephanie Lee Powers, in the Kelly Miller Smith Institute in Black Church Studies, Melvin Guest, Jr., Matthew Lewis Kelly, Danero Raming, Danero Antoine Raming, Tremaine Sales Dunbar, Hunter Shea Rhodes, Keaton Carlisle Walkeen, Travis Deshawn Williams, and Marvin Wilcox, Jr. In Latin American Studies, Michael Fears Johnston. And that is, please join me in congratulating the recipients of the Academic and Service Awards and the graduates of the certificate programs. Before I begin my charge to the graduates, I'd like for us to take um, a moment of silence. Some of you may know that Anna Kelly's mother died yesterday while in hospice care, and that's why she's not with us today. So if we could just remember Anna and her mom. Blessed be. You are the only graduating class to get two charges from the dean. I'm not sure if this will help or hurt, but here we are. In this unusual moment, let me begin by reminding you that last year I began by quoting Thomas Paine and his line, these are the times that try our souls. And I went on to describe the challenges of the pandemic as we knew them nearly a year ago. We had no idea that we were just at the tip of the coronavirus iceberg and that in the coming months we would witness the murder of George Floyd and national and international protests that followed and was more diverse than I can recall in any of my lifetime. Over 585,000 COVID-related deaths, and for some of us, these are not just statistics. It describes our relatives, our partners, our friends, members of our congregations and groups we work with, and more. So it's personal. A presidential election that saw the greatest voter participation in 120 years and was and continues to be rimmed with the big lie, a coup attempt on Congress, the stirring words of Amanda Gorman, if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. The rise of hate crimes against Asian, Asian American, 
and Pacific Islanders communities that joins those continuing crimes against Latinx and black communities, trans people, and far too many more. Three vaccines and the dawning of hope that this pandemic can be defeated. The conviction of Derek Chauvin the ongoing roiling questions we have about what it means to protect and serve. The end of another academic year and a year where you have already moved on from VDS and are doing all manner of changing the world for the better things, both large and small. Usually my charge to the graduates is my launch to you into your future, but you've already moved on. Your future happened a while ago. And so you are in your next. I'm changing my charge to you as more of a check-in, more a set of reminders in the form of questions for your journey. From your perspective of one year out with many more years to go, how is your heart, your mind, your body, your soul? I'm asking about your insides and if and how you are caring for your thick isness as you are moving through these challenging times? Have you taken periodic breaks to dig deeply and carefully into yourself and to do your first works over so that you better understand the you that you have been and are bringing in your various moments of living and to hold fast to the fact that as God's revelation is ongoing, so should your life journey and awareness of the world around you. Have you been tempted to pull a pre-Second Kings move and only sit by your respective city gate? Or do you live in communities that remind you to have the gumption of the four lepers who take up the work of going into the city, not knowing what they will find there, but at least being agents in your living rather than roosting hens of despair? This takes more than good cornbread stuffing. You see, when the writer of Hebrews reminds us that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses to run the race with perseverance, we are encouraged not to abandon our salvation. But we're also being challenged to have endurance, which is to live with the past, in the present, with a hope for our tomorrows. This kind of endurance coaxes us to have patience in the midst of the challenges we face and the joys we revel in. This kind of endurance does not always depend on our smarts or our phones or our ability to explain the unexplainable or how well we craft our thoughts in sermons or meetings or petitions. This endurance in the deep knowing of faith and welcomes our check in time with ourselves so that we can continue on. You see, there's an important difference between knowledge and knowing a difference between technical expertise and listening to the rhythms of a living God in our lives. A difference between annoying helicopters
who take their time and knowing they will land somewhere. A difference between being able to count how many people are sitting at the dining room table and since when all are there and to know when someone is listening. A difference between strategizing about your next move on how you're gonna get close to the one who has captured your attention and turning around time and time again, and there they are. Now both have their place and both are needed and sometimes they come together in marvelous ways. But the ongoing challenge you will face is having the faith to allow knowledge and knowing to work on God's time and not exclusively our own and keep to the various tasks you have been called to morning by morning and day by day. And remember that God is not calling you to do everything and be all things. No, you're being called to do that which is needful, that which you can do. And to remember the countless others are receiving this same call so it's not all about you, but you're important. The journey to this kind of endurance is heart work, head work. It means getting into trouble, making mistakes, having success, starting over again, trying again. And this is the good trouble of change and hope, rimmed with love and faith as you continue to work your way to spirit-filled justice as individuals and in communities, intentionally, imaginatively, strategically. Thank you for allowing us to accompany you on this part of your life journey. Stay in touch or continue to stay in touch and please take good care. We will always keep the light on for you here at VDS. Blessed be. And now as we near the end of this ceremony, I get to make a few announcements and how to exit the tent. Now listen carefully because it's not as easy as you think it's going to be. <laughs> the graduates will exit one row at a time. Graduates, I invite you to collect a box of cherries and chocolate and a charcuterie box to share with your guests in celebration of this day. You will exit through the entrance to your right with the balloons and the strawberries and chocolate tent is right behind me. The charcuterie boxes are just at the exit. I hope you can enjoy these gifts as you celebrate today. For those graduates watching virtually, you will receive a commemorative gift in the mail in the coming weeks. I'm not being coy, I simply don't know what it is. <laughs> Once the students have left the field, guests will exit to your left, that away, toward 25th Avenue or through the back of the tent. For both guests and graduates, we ask that you please continue to observe physical distancing and continue wearing your masks. And now graduates, the true measure of a great university is that the alumni contribute to the wider world. As you take 
your next steps or continue taking them toward your bright future, exciting future. Go forth with all your heart. Use your education to do more than sit in these chairs. Lift the world. Benefit humankind. Graduates, I am, entrust, I am entrusted by the university with the privilege of sending you forth to invest your gifts and talents for the betterment of society, to lift up humanity and bring honor to Vanderbilt. Will all in the audience please stand as able for the university's alma mater as played by the Vanderbilt Spirit of Gold marching band, after which the ceremony is concluded. Thank you. 